Iris, you've been building an audience on social media. Congratulations. You've got like combined audience of, you know, something like 100,000 people. Um, and you are finding that, of course, a lot of projects take a lot of time, especially with an audience like that. Uh, you are also like inspired to write a book or you, you've actually gotten an advance, something like that for a book, right? And then you're, you're also doing an audio book and you know that these projects, content creation, including books, increase your reach, but not necessarily your income. Um, at least there are many other things we could do to, to increase client load and income. Um, so, you know, and also these content creation projects can be very perfectionistic. So they could take a lot of, a lot of time and energy. So just want to remind you all and, you know, Iris and everybody watching this content creation is for long-term business benefit. Yes. It also has short-term benefit for our own personal growth, our own clarity of messaging and our own creativity, but for business, it's a long-term project for, for shorter term um, business revenue, we would need to do gentle launches. So, um, so Iris, what is on your plan right now for the next month, two months, three months in terms of gentle launches? Um, I am sort of doing core right now. So, so the core I've program of market done, research, aligned offers. Yeah. yeah. So I've never done any market research. I sort of like when I started this, it was very much a hobby, a side hobby. I wasn't looking to earn money. So I didn't do things like gentle launchers or courses or anything like that to earn money because that was not my mindset. And so, yeah, so I'm going to be talking with some people in the next few weeks to see what the needs are, what are, you know, different services and, and yeah. products that yeah. they're open to. And then I think <laughs> from that, I will do a free to attend workshop. Yes, um, great. That yeah. That's a really, and so I, I think given that you yourself, you, 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 you're, you're a parent as well, so you're busy, I think it's really important for you to structure your time wisely so that you have the long-term projects, like when I say long-term, I mean long-term benefit projects like the book, audio book, content, create, managing your social media audience. Those are all long-term and, and I bet you probably get more direct messages than, than most of us. So, you know, just to, just to give you the permission to say, you don't have to respond to all of them. <laughs> right? Like, like I, yeah, you know, so, so, uh, and I hope you're not responding to most of the comments. And it's so, it's so nice when creators respond, reply to our comments, but I, it's been a long time. It's been years since I've replied to, to, to comments. I just like them. I just like, like all the comments. And then like, I'll respond to an occasional one that maybe it's a question that I feel like would be helpful as an answer to everybody, that kind of thing. So anyway, so you mentioned that Facebook group was something you were thinking about phasing out. That you mentioned in your other, you know, talks, like you wouldn't do a free Facebook group. Again, like I mentioned, I started this not thinking of it as a business. And so it's like, okay, how can, what else can I give people? But then I've been noticing that that's like something that um, I enjoy the least. It doesn't take a lot of time for me, but there's not yeah. a lot of engagement, maybe because yeah. of the algorithm or something like, yeah, yeah. I, I post something in that group and there's not a lot of engagement. Right. Um, but it continues to grow, like people continue to want to sign up. Yeah. But I feel yeah. like most of my content or helpful resources that I share are just on my business page. And um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm wondering how how to phase that out or should totally. I phase it out? Since yeah, it's not taking a lot of time necessarily. Totally. If I were you, I, so when you say your, your, your combined audience is 100K, do you mean a bunch of them are in the Facebook group? No, so 100K is just for my IG account and my business, my Facebook business. Okay, so page. not the, okay, good. So, so I, I was just saying that because if you're, if a lot of your audience is in the Facebook group, phasing it out would mean phasing out most of your audience, right? So, so if, so given that it's a minority of your audience, it's a smaller percentage. If I were you, I would do this. I would make us uh, an attractive post in the group directing people to your Facebook business page and to your IG account and pin that to the top and then disable postings from everybody else. I don't know if people are able to post in your group right now. Yeah, yeah, they can. So I would turn that off 
and I would just pin. So in other words, the, the posting would be like, hey, everyone, um, while I'm working on my, you could say, while I'm working on my book and upcoming projects, um, I, I'm going to pause this group and just encourage all of you to uh, come over to the, the Facebook page and the Instagram account. That's where I'm going to put my attention and I will revive this group at some point later, um, meaning when you have enough money to hire someone to do so. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. And then that way you can focus on both the business page and the IG page, which both allow you to reliably keep in touch with people because with both accounts, you could do uh, ads, warm audience ads to make sure you reach the 100,000 or at least the 50 to 70,000. You could very reliably reach them. Now, depending on your budget. But yeah, with a Facebook group that has low engagement, it's time. It's time to at least pause it. That's my suggestion, yeah. Okay, so why would you recommend pausing it and not just shutting it down? Does that just feel well, too Well, because extreme? you're saying that people are still joining, right? Yes, yes. So you still allow people to join. Um, in okay. fact, uh, I don't know, if do you have to like approve every new person who's joined? I mean, you can click approve all at once a week or something like that, right? So yeah, I would still allow people to join, but once they join, they see the, the post, you know, the top post, uh, hopefully maybe even two posts at near the top. Well, I guess you can only pin one, but you can pin a feature. But anyway, you pin the post at the top, telling them to go, and even the, well, the cover image. Um, uh, yeah, the cover image may, can, can have the description. Even before they join the group, they can see the cover image description and they, that might direct them towards your, your other places but if they join the group they'll see the pin to post they'll get this but they could still comment on older stuff right so that's okay yeah so it's not like i would be posting new content there it would just be sort of sitting there and yeah, people can sitting there the past no yeah yeah i i don't don't you know if you're getting low engagement just let it go for now and let people because if people go in and they want to see stuff They'll be reminded that oh that's right she's active there yeah so cool yeah Thank you thanks Iris so yeah just to just to round out the this conversation like just make sure you structure your time so that you have enough time every week to do your gentle launch whatever the gentle launch is if you just keep or the core the market research like yeah it, you got to carve out enough time for that because that's what's going to bring the you know the sales the income in the next three months you know so yeah thanks thank you